let me just start with saying this. Social media and media, please leave my family alone. The only reason why I am discussing this is I have been told by several authorities uh, that this would be helpful to other people. So please leave my family alone. Something happened over the summer. Um, I took a vacation in uh, July because uh, something had uh, happened and my family and I, we needed to go away together for a while. My wife woke me up about hmm, 12.20 in the morning. And she said, honey, the phone right just rang half a ring and then it stopped. And I wanted to say, thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for the update. Now back to sleep. And she said, somebody picked it up. We have a phone in our house that has two or three lines. And it shows, you know, the incoming call, has caller ID, has the incoming call, and then it also has a line on it, it lights up. If somebody picks it up, it lights up. And so I sat up in bed and I said, what do you mean somebody picked it up? And she said, somebody picked it up. And I went up into the kid's room and they're both sound asleep. We have monitoring and um, there is... There is someone monitoring our house visually and audio 24-7. Um, my family has been under attack. We have, we have had problems uh, in the past. So I take it very seriously. I said, is anybody on duty? And she said, no. And I said, well, okay, let's not panic. And so we sat there and we talked for a few minutes. And... Um, uh, we looked at the caller ID, and I won't tell you where it's from, um, but it was from out of state. And uh, I said, we don't know anybody. That's Maybe it was a wrong number. She said, I swear to you, somebody picked it up. I'm thinking that somebody is outside in the guard shack or something and maybe picked up the phone in there and is, is communicating with somebody. Phone does not ring. The light just goes on and somebody is making a call in my house and we watch it for a while and it's, it's going for three, four minutes. So I get the dogs and I um, give them the command to um, search and kill. Uh, and I have them both by a leash uh, and I have a gun. And I walk out of the bedroom and I walk into the living room and we have a very long hallway in our, in our house. And I was walking down that center hallway and I'm at the living room and I announce, if there is someone in the house, I have a gun and I have dogs. I and my family feel under threat and I will shoot to kill. Um, please announce yourself. Nothing. I keep walking down the hall. I keep repeating it. I have a gun and I will shoot to kill. My family and I feel as though we're under attack. The dogs are all keyed up because they can feel the tension in the house. And we hear something. And I stop and I'm about to let the dogs go. And I say, if, if there is someone in the house or if it is one of the children you need to identify yourself right now because I will shoot to kill. I hear my son say, Dad, it's me. Were you on the phone? No. Were you on the phone? Why? Answer the question. Yes. Now, who is my son talking to? It's now 1.30 in the morning, I think. Who's my son talking to at 1.30 in the morning? My son is 13. He said, I was just talking about a game from one of the gamers from, that I play with on PlayStation. I said, what's the name? And it was the name on the caller ID. I said, how old is he? He's in his 30s. My son's 13. I said, are you out of your mind? 
First of all, you gave him our phone number. You identified yourself. You're playing with a stranger. All of those things break the rules of the house. And he's like, it's nothing. And I said, he's in his 30s. You're 13. What does a 30-year-old have to? And he's like, it's nothing. And I said, let me ask you a question. If your sister, who's 11, was on the phone with a 30-year-old guy, would you be saying the same thing? No. Well, what the hell is wrong with you? I probably didn't ha- handle it the right way, but I think I handled it the way any parent would at 2 o'clock in the morning. The police officers ask if they can uh, spend a few minutes with just Tanya and I, and I know what they're going to ask because I had just been told what happens uh, next, and that is they're going to ask for the PlayStation. They will ask for the PlayStation or the Xbox or whatever it is that you're using um, because they have information that they'll need to get off of that, including every conversation that he has ever had online. And I said, well, I don't think he saves any of it. And uh, Tim said, that's not a problem. The child sex crimes unit is in my living room. We um, sit down with a police officer and um, he asks, you know, what was going on? Who initiated the call? You know, what do you guys talk about? My son defends him. And says, my mom and dad, um, they always, they're paranoid. and They always think that somebody's out to get us and everything else. <clears throat> you know, in my case, um, <laughs> partly true, uh, but partly because, yes, they are. Um, and I was shocked at my son because he has witnessed it. And I thought my kids understood that because they've, they've witnessed very frightening things. I thought my kids would get it, but obviously they didn't. To cut to the, the chase here, because we had a phone with dual lines that lit up so you could see if someone was on the phone, because my children did not have access to the computer, because they did not have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or anything else. Because we were lucky enough. I would not have looked at that light. My wife did. On the first attempt, he was caught. I'm not going to give you any details other than the authorities were aware of him. Uh, there were um, apparently 12 other children he was grooming. Uh, and that's all I can uh, say. 